All right, there's the deer stand. It's on the north side of the property. We've got the trail cameras. I think this is clover. They're cutting it today. You can see the lawnmower. And uh, looks pretty good. We've got the corn ready. I learned something interesting. I don't, uh, the fellow who's doing it says, as long as the corn is standing and the ears are on the corn, then you're not feeding the deer. If you drop the corn on the ground, that you cannot do. So obviously deer stand, clover, there's a, there's water up here for the deer because they do get thirsty. Let's see. Yeah. Where's the water? There's the water. It's shaded so we have less evaporation. So it looks pretty good. Corn looks good. Clover looks good. This place is gorgeous. Uh, they've been working on it for years. It's really a treasure. I'm so lucky to have people who want to work the property. All right, this is the upper food plot. Now what's hard to appreciate, there's a trail camera over there that has a hat on it or it will go nuts with all this activity. They're dragging this two layers of fence around to smooth out the seabed, getting some tilling action going. Uh, this corn, there must be six acres of corn. I did not appreciate that. Now, obviously, this is my property, but these two enjoy doing what they're doing so much that I just say, eh, do whatever you want. And I did get another explanation. You, I was right. You cannot put corn on the ground in Wisconsin. You can do it apparently in any other state, but in Wisconsin, you can't. So the corn stays upright, obviously, on the corn stocks we're doing some chilling breaking up the ground tim is uh, smoothing it out with the fence we're going to do the same thing later on for some wildflower planting yeah so it's all good i better keep clear the sun's in his eyes they'll probably run me over Just smooths out all the roughness, gives you a nice seat bed. Man, is it awesome living in the Midwest. I tell you, you get to do stuff. I don't think you get to do this anywhere else. I'm sure you can do it in Washington State. But I'm five, mi five miles from downtown Milwaukee. Five miles. I'm five miles from the airport. Uh, this is a sweet, sweet existence but I didn't really do anything to earn it. It just sort of dropped in my lap. I'll be back. Okay. He hit us All with right, one fertilizer. more time. Hit us one more time. Yeah, go film. ahead and burn my skin with that artificial chemical <laughs> fertilizer. All right, I'm heading down, all right? All right. So he's Here, spreading the fertilizer. To... You watch that tractor, I kill you. Yeah. Um, so Nathan, what's going to be planted here? Uh, half of this plot will be clover. The other half, half will be um, deadly dozen. So it's pretty much radishes, purple top turnip, sugar beet. Uh, there's a little bit of mixture of chicory and clover. Uh, what else? There's a bunch of stuff, but it's mainly just purple top turnip, sugar beet, radishes. Cool. You love it. You know, it's all about the deer. Yeah, and the, what kind of deer come out here? Whitetail? Whitetail. And aren't they considered one of the major pests in this country? The major what? Pest. Yes. Yes. So we're, we're, we're feeding pests. Well, whatever. Even deer have needs. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. This is a bit of a walk and talk. You know, the, the beauty of living in this area with the people who are my friends is it is so blissful. There's so much, whatever you want, city time, you can go to the theater, you can have fun doing whatever you want. You can hunt, I don't hunt. You can go out into the fields like this and just enjoy nature. And realize over there, there's 80 acres of what they call CRP land, 
which is Conservation Reserve Program. And it's, it's basically wild. It's 80 acres of wild land. Somebody has decided to take that 80 acres and just put it back to nature. And it's been that way for 30 years. And then I'm lucky enough to have neighbors who want to take advantage, use the corner of my property for growing corn and beets and rutabagas and clover. And then I get to share their experience. I get to go up and, and ask questions like, what do you mean? How do you do that? What's the story? Now, do I ever plan on doing it? No, but it's a great way to connect with other people, the environment, what they're doing, uh, be more aware of the weather in terms of rain and everything else. And it just, it rocks. And so I thought I'd take a minute and explain that because a lot of people say, well, why do you enjoy this? That's the reason I enjoy it. It's a connection with the earth, with the planet, with crops, the seasons, my neighbors, and get to know them intimately. And every time I talk to them, I learn a little bit more about them. It is a spiritual experience. I love it. And I just wanted to let everybody know that. So that's just the end. I love you all. Peace out.